Hi everyone, so now we'll see uh, this data treatment in data analytics. So last session we discussed uh, uh, EDA and now we'll see how data treatment is performed in data analytics. So after covering uh, certain exploratory data analysis uh, concepts and assumptions and, and models, now let's see uh, quickly what is data treatment and then uh, we'll, we'll go back to EDA and we'll compare with data warehousing and we'll uh, understand few more topics and concepts on data analytics. So in this session, the agenda is uh, data treatment, outliers, default values, missing values, skewed distribution, the case study for uh, transforming skewed data, transformed data, derived variable and conclusion. So EDA will reveal data issues and need for better explanatory variables. The data treatment to prepare the data for further analysis includes the derived variable creation. You need to identify which all defined variables you have in your business scenario and uh, what all computed variables or uh, calculated variables or derived variables you want to implement that scenario uh, better. You need to understand uh, and identify the missing values and how the outliers needs to be treated, whether they needs to be discarded or you need to you know set some uh, upper cap for the outlier values. You need to understand this scenario before you uh, start working on the outliers and other uh, data cleansing techniques. Then you need to understand what all default values you want for certain fields or attributes for which you do not have any value because it seems most of the models that you apply uh, on any data require you know the data to be in, in the in the cleansed format. I mean you will not be able to uh, draw good inferences if there are some missing values or duplications or inconsistencies in your data. So you need to understand all those problems beforehand and then start implementing or using them in your algorithms and the models that you are implementing. So you need to understand all the transformation requirements. You need to understand beforehand how the missing values uh, should be treated. How, how, to, how to have some default values for the fields or the attributes for which you do not have any, any value supplied by the end user. So all these transformation requirements needs to be uh, understood first and then you need to apply them before you start using uh, your data for, for some particular analysis. So as we discussed earlier, this outliers that you see in your uh, various data or uh, the analysis that you have conducted okay, needs to be treated well. So outliers are nothing but the extreme values that can occur on both sides. You can have extreme uh, lower values or extreme you know, upper values as your outlier values. So some values which, are, which do not match with most of the other values which are extremely high or some values which do not match with most of the other values because they are extremely low are called as outliers. In a normal distribution, 0.4% uh, values are outliers. So anything that is greater than 2.7 standard deviation and in 1 a million is an extreme outlier that is greater than 4.7 to ST. Outlier treatment can be done by deleting the outliers and trimming or capping the outliers. So as we discussed earlier, there are two ways you can, you can handle these outliers. One is you completely discard them or another way is you set an upper cap and a lower cap and ensure that below that particular value, the lower value that you have set or the upper value that you have set, you are not considering uh, those results. Uh, this is an example for outlier to understand outlier. Average public teacher pay and spending on public schools per pupil in 1985 for 50 states and the District of Columbia were reported by the by this particular Albuquerque Tribune. So if you see this graph where which is spend versus pay, uh, this answers your question like in Alaska which is an outlier in terms of spending per pupil. So uh, here I mean certain values if you see, okay, if you see there is one uh, block which is extremely away from most of the other blocks. So this can be treated as an outlier and either you set an upper cap for this particular outlier or you completely discard it. There are some more examples uh, of outlier or anomaly detection. So Susan's 
uses pattern of her credit card is two or three transactions in a month of total value less than 5000 one day uh, she uses her card at a book fair to buy a magazine subscription two days later there are 10 transactions on her card at an online retail merchant for a total value of greater than 35000 so in this case should susan's bank be suspicious and check with her about the transactions made or should they just continue approving transactions on her credit card so that's the question here because if you see this particular month's transaction susan's current month's transactions do not match with most of the previous transactions that she performed so this is definitely an outlier situation where the bank need to analyze and understand this thoroughly whether all those transactions are done by this card holder or they are some suspicious transactions so as we said outliers can be completely discarded or you can set a set a cap for uh, outliers so values can be 3 sd from the mean values can be the 99th percentile and so on so change the outlier to another value by trimming it make the outlier equal to the next highest value which requires a graphical representation to see what outliers are and which value should it be trimmed to. For example, age of the oldest person in a data set might be 107, but the next highest value might be 90. We might trim age to a highest value of 90. So this age 107, you need to trim it in such a way that it is considered as 90 and it should match with most of the other values that you have in your range. Then comes the default values. So we need to understand how default values are treated in uh, EDA. So default values are numbers used in a variable that have some other meaning. For example, the credit score of a person might vary from 50 to 100, but if the card was inactive, the card might be assigned different values such as 10 to denote inactive for two years, 20 to den denote inactive for 12 months, and 30 to denote inactive for six months and so on so it is important to know that these are default values and also be also to treat these values appropriately before beginning any analysis so many a times to avoid missing values in our uh, business scenario we try to replace those with some default values for example if if there's a date of birth column that you're that you're uh, uh, i mean expecting from your end users and let's say some end users missed out entering their date of birth you can consider one one some one particular date as the default date or let's say there is a field where you're asking people to enter their salaries people who have not entered their salary you can you can replace that missing value with some default salary value so this is one important thing because Every analysis that you do, any kind of analytics that you perform requires your data to be in the most accurate or uh, the data integrity has to be in the most accurate form. Only then conducting some analysis, doing some analysis on that data will make sense. So these default values are also, you, you must have seen, are common features of databases. So in databases, you have various constraints to ensure that the valid and the right data comes to your fields. So we have constraints like primary key, foreign key, check constraint, not null. And one of the constraints supported by almost all databases is this default constraint, where if a user does not supply a value for a particular field, you replace that missing value or that blank value with some default value. So treatment of default values can vary by the variable and what the default values mean. So default uh, can be treated as missing can also be treated as the lower or lowest or the highest values and in some cases leave the values as it is and in any analysis treat these observations differently such as uh, creating a subclass of the inactive accounts so you can have further classification for the same and you can assign it some other value to represent some some fact or to represent some some phenomenon then comes this missing value uh, problem so what to do if certain values are missing? So there are several course of actions that you can perform in case if you see a missing value in a given business scenario while doing this data analysis. Number one, find the variables with missing values. Number two, determine the percentage of missing values for each variable. Number three, understand the variable. Does the missing value have a meaning or it is, it is a mistake? And then try gathering that missing information.
So the missing values needs to be treated properly before they are used in any kind of analysis. So the treatment is, if it is a mistake and over 50% of the variables has missing values, detect the variable, I mean delete the variable. So if it is a mistake, over 50% of the variable are missing, then delete, simply delete that 50% of the values are missing, then delete that variable. If the missing values have a meaning, uh, means zero, treat the missing as zero. The missing values can be treated to minimum, maximum or mean or median depending on the variable and on and or understanding of the variable. For example, total family income variable has a lot of missing values as people fill out only their income and not the family's income. Okay, then this is uh, about skewed distributions. So when you see a, a, a chart where you have this positive skewness, so positive skew is reduced by using the square root or log and negative skew is reduced by squaring the data values. So these two diagrams, charts as you see represent the positive skewness and negative skewness in statistics. This is an example to understand the skewed distribution. So the waiting time at the tailor in a bank is skewed distribution. The transaction volumes are typically very high in the first 10 days of the month when most people come to collect their salaries make payments and so on. It, it tapers off towards the end of the month. So if you see during the initial days of any month, during the beginning dates of any month, there are, I mean the number of transactions performed in any bank are huge. Okay, compared to the number of transactions which are performed in, in mid of the month or towards the end of the month. So this scenario represents a skewed distribution where you will see initially a very high skewness and then slowly and gradually it will, it will come down. Treatment, another example could be treatment time in the hospital emergency ward is also skewed distribution. It is not a data issue but the nature of the process at the emergency room makes the treatment time distribution skewed. So let's see how to transform the skewed data. So you need to understand its background, the experiment and the methodology. So in background, where cloud seeding is done to increase rainfall, clouds are seeded with silver nitrate to see the clouds. The experiment is, an experiment was conducted to see if indeed cloud seeding would increase rainfall. And the methodology uh, would be clouds were randomly selected for seeding and rainfall data was captured in uh, acre per acre feet. So here you see the diagram, the univariate analysis of the unseeded cloud and the seeded cloud. The histogram of the two data sets show the data is skewed in both the cases. So this is the transformed data. A log transformation is used to reduce the huge variance in the data. The histogram of the log transformed data is as you see in the slide. Then comes the next tool which is derived variable. A derived variable is a variable which is calculated from information from one or more other fields. So as we discussed the example of total price, so in a product data set or in a product table if I have say price and quantity and if someone wants to see the total price in the in the reports that I'm preparing I can I can I can compute the total price by multiplying this this price and quantity fields that I have and that way I can compute a new field called as a derived variable so we can have calc calculate so there are several terminologies used for derived variable it is also called as computed variable and calculated variable so this can be easily done by writing some expression on the existing variables and you know one can easily derive this variables and make their reports and the analysis more meaningful. The derived variable should have a meaning and relevance in the context of the analysis. So as we said, I mean in, in this particular scenario where I have the uh, quantity of the item and I have the end unit price of the item, if you want to compute the total price, this, this makes sense, this has some some association or relationship with you know this particular product table okay people may want to see this in the reports that you are generating for them that what is the total price you know for this particular product for some other particular product that you have in your uh, product table so it ultimately it should make sense at the end of it it cannot be created out of any set of variables okay it, it should have some meaning and some necessity in the business scenario for example Based on the date and the customer vis visited a store, derived variables could be the days since last visit or months since last visit. This uses the current date and the date of last visit. So I can, I have the customer's current visit date and the last visit date. By calculating the difference of these two dates, I can easily compute 
after how many days or how many months or how many years that customer is visiting my outlet so this was an example of these two were example of the derived variables or computed variables or in case of credit card scenario as you see the percentage utilization on a customer's credit card based on available balance sales to balance or sales to payment ratio can be easily calculated by using this credit card information that you have about that particular customer so to quickly summarize eda that we covered in two components i mean that we covered in two phases eda is an approach to data analysis eda involves inspecting data without any assumptions eda build a strong understanding of the data issues related to either the data or the process and it is a systematic approach to discover the story of the data the four categories of eda are univariate analysis i mean univariate or one variable non graphical data or the univariate graphical data the multivariate or multiple variables non graphical data and multivariate graphical data outliers are extreme values that can occur on both sides they can be the minimum extremely minimum value or extremely maximum value default values are numbers which numbers used in a variable that have some other meaning and a derived variable is a variable which is calculated from information from one or more other existing fields that you have in your business scenario so hope we understood some data cleansing processes or tasks which are involved in eta in terms of outlier treatment default values derived variable etc thank you very much